Hey, 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 what's going on, everybody? Happy, I got a weird thing going on behind me. Happy Monday. Mindset Monday is going on. What's going on? How you doing? Let me know where you're watching from. I got a mirror behind me, and that's going to just mess with this screen. And so that's just how it's going to go. Let me know where you're watching from. I'm as always out here on the East Coast in Pennsylvania. I see Texas is in the house and Lexi's in sunny California with Lynn Rayner. What's going on, Lynn? How you doing? We got Al from the Bend in the house. What's going on? Good to see you. All right, that little mirror thing's going to bother me. You know it's going to bother me. Hang on. We're going to fix it. We are going to fix it. Oh. We got to get creative around here, folks. Got to get creative. There's a will, there's a way. To block that sucker out. What's going on? Oh, don't tell me it's going to do that now. <laughs> it just, it's going to kill me. It's good to see you. It's good to see everybody. What's going on, Candy? Good to see you. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Hope everyone's having a beautiful start to your week. Hope you had an amazing weekend and are getting at it. August, a whole new month. Excited to be rocking and rolling with each and every one of you. And we are going to get started here in just a couple of minutes. Make sure you send out the messages to everyone in your team. Let them know this is the place to be. Mindset Monday, the next 30 minutes. We are going to be going over our book, Give and Take by Adam Grant. So excited that you guys are here. Um, it's going to be fun. We're going to have a great time. So take the next 60 seconds, send a message out, let some people know, say, hey, Mindset Monday's going on, you want to be here. This is going to drive me nuts, it's driving me nuts, that background is driving me nuts. All right, so you're going to get the reality, hang on, enough of this. There you go. There it is. There's my background, nitty gritty. Jennifer's office, I'm taking over. It's good to see all of you. I have got notes on notes on notes from this. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm so fired up. And I thought we were gonna get through a couple chapters today. The reality is, is chapter two is just chock full of information. The peacock and the panda. Give and Take by Adam Grant, Chapter 2. And so that's really what I want to cover tonight. That's really what we're going to go through. And I want to remind everyone, say you're, you're here and, and um, say you're like, you know what, Taylor, I, uh, I, I haven't got the book. Um, I haven't read the book. I want you to know, you're, my hope is that you're going to get some value, some benefit from this call. My hope is that even without reading the book, listening to the book, that just by attending these calls, you will pick up some nuggets. You'll pick up some stuff that'll hopefully bring some value to your life. A lot of people are busy. They got stuff going on. I understand that. And so I want you to know that, that uh, don't feel bad if that's you. My hope is, and, and my happiness comes from the fact that you are choosing to show up and you're choosing to be here um, to hopefully grow. And uh, so chapter two, chapter two is called The Peacock and the Panda. In give and take. And I have got a bunch of notes. And like always, we're going to run through them. Um, but do me a favor, before we get started, put a five in the comments if you are excited for the, the pre-sale launch of Paradise Punch this week. Let me know if you're excited in the comments. I am so fired up. I am so freakishly excited to get this product. I think that everyone that was in Mexico uh, you know, they got their hands on this product, wishes they would have saved it and uh, and made it last a little bit longer. But yes, for anyone that has not been on our What's Up Weekly calls or any of our calls, we will be this Wednesday uh, launching the pre-sale of uh, Paradise Punch with the shipping and uh, uh, we'll be getting it out to everyone by the end of August. But again, so excited. Yeah, digitally, yeah. So there's a uh, learn to Kindle books. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of great options out there. So again, I just invite you to get creative. YouTube's got a lot of great cliff notes for a lot of the books that we're doing. Um, I know that Erica Jordan was amazing. She found our last book and, and uh, 
like a di di digital format and uh, was able to get it out to a bunch of people. So again, resourceful, get resourceful. Um, getting into chapter two here, as always, I just take a whole bunch of notes and my goal is just to go through them and really with all of these books, because these books are not network marketing specific, really. They're, they're networking specific, but they're not network marketing specific. And I picked them very intentionally because I feel like a lot of network marketing books, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but they kind of just give um, a lot of, like a lot of the greats just kind of give a lot of the same information. It's just kind of how to build a network. It's how to build, be a leader, how to go for no, how to, you know, a lot of these principles that, Sometimes you get a little burnt out of here, right? Sometimes you're like, all right, I'm, 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 I've heard that enough. I've heard go for no one. I've heard, you know, all this stuff. I want, I need to grow up here. There's something disconnecting up here. There's something missing up here. And, uh, and, it, and it's just not coming from someone telling me to go work on. So chapter two in give and take, the, the, the principle of this chapter, in my opinion, the principle of this chapter really comes down to how to create a rich network. How to create a rich network. That is what I want to get into tonight. That is what I want to talk about this evening. How to create a rich network. This chapter talks a lot about givers and takers and matchers. And the one thing that I love so much is that this book really helps identify that there's you know, there's a lot of people that find themselves when they really dig deep in that taker or matcher category, but it's not always a bad thing, right? It's it's just kind of sometimes circumstance, it's sometimes life, it's sometimes just again situationally where we happen to be. But I think that this book helps not only to help you identify where you're at, give you some some signs to help you identify, but also give you some habits and some things that you could do differently. Some uh, you know, there's some studies in this chapter. So there's some different things he talks about. The first thing that I wrote down was the more altruistic your attitude, the more benefits you will gain from the relationships in your life. The more altruistic your attitude, the more benefits you will gain from the relationships in your life. I think that this book really helps you identify and break down spotting a taker and a, um, and a giver and a matcher really, but spotting the biggest thing they talk about in chapter two is spotting a taker and a giver's clothes. Now I want you guys to this, this chapter forces us to kind of look at ourselves because a lot of this is, is helping us to look through the eyes of our prospects and how they see us, how our prospects are looking at us, not how we should be looking at our prospects, but how our prospects are looking at us. Drop a three in the comments if that makes sense. This chapter was very important. I wanna make sure that you're understanding that because it's important that we stop and identify that sometimes we might be acting, not that we are, but we might be acting as a taker in giver's clothes. And what have I said a lot of times that remembering that an ulterior motive can be smelt, it can be felt, it can, be, it can be heard, it can be seen a mile away. Ulterior motives can be felt so far away. I wanna talk about kind of how you, you can really start to identify where you're at when it comes to your business, because I think a lot of people will find themselves, if you ask them, in their normal lives, outside of network marketing, they, they fall, a lot of people, you know, I would like to hope would find themselves falling in that giver mentality. You got giver, you know, they, they see themselves as a giver or a matcher. But then we get into network marketing and we get told that we're only here to bring value and we want to be solution oriented and hope brokers. But there's always something in the back of your head that's thinking about building your business, that's thinking about growing your organization. The study that they talked about in chapter two, uh, they, they gave a stranger, they said if a stranger was to give you $10, or they gave a stranger $10 and they, they were going to split it um, and they were going to negotiate with you on how they were going to split it. 80% of people rejected the proposal that did not come out fair. So if I was the stranger to you and I had $10 and I said, okay, I'm going to give you 
three, and I'm going to take seven, 80% of people rejected that and took nothing as opposed to getting the $3 and letting someone else get more. This was a fascinating study for me to sit and think about our prospects and think about some of the realities of network marketing. We say it all the time. Um, entrepreneurship as a whole, just about 1% of people will find true success. It's true across every entrepreneurship platform, everyone. It's not just network marketing. A lot of people like to say only, you know, 99% of people will never make a dollar. It's true. 90 plus percent of real estate agents that go out and spend thousands of dollars to get their real estate license never sell a home. 90% of small businesses shut down in their first three to five years. So knowing these numbers, it's really important that we got to start to think about how can you give more than you receive? How can you give more than you receive? I love this. The, the, the benefits will ensue from investments in meaningful activities and relationships. What does that mean? Benefits will ensue from investments in meaningful activities and relationships. I was having a conversation with someone today, uh, a brand partner, amazing brand partner in our, our, our organization uh, during the coaching call. And we were talking about you know, you've heard me say this again, marrying the process and divorcing re the result, falling in love with the fact that this business has nothing to do with you. We like to think a lot that, that our business is like the only piece of benefit that we could offer someone in our network. That's another mistake that networkers make. The second that you get involved in a company, it's like all the other benefits that you could potentially bring to a relationship kind of get sidelined to that opportunity. And I want to remind you that it is in those meaningful investments, it is in those uh, meaningful investments in those activities and those relationships where you are going to build the trust necessary for someone to take a look at what it is that you have without thinking that it is a taker presenting it to them. Another thing that I love from this chapter is matchers will punish takers. This was a really big one. And this is going to hit some people hard. If you have ever had someone leave your organization and talk poorly about you, they didn't get the support. They didn't get the, they didn't get the love. They didn't get the now, I, there, there is a flip side. Some people just are looking to cause chaos in their, in their absence. But some people, for some people, that's true. And a lot of leaders will have people leave their organization and go, oh, my gosh, they're saying that I didn't give them support. They're saying that I didn't, I didn't, uh, I wasn't there for them. I think it's very, very important that we own as independent business owners, as independent brand partners, each and every one of you out there. I think it's very important that we own the energy in which that we bring someone into this business. It's very easy to, without even trying, overpromise to a prospect in this business. And in doing so, it creates a false perception that can make you look like a taker without ever being one. Because the second that that, um, that pedestal that you've set so high isn't lived up to, that person is going to have a, dr a direct excuse not only to stop working, but to blame you for their lack of results. This is a really big thing when it comes to givers and takers or givers and productivity. At the end of this chapter, they talked about how do you do the trade-off? What's the trade-off 
being a giver or being productive. Because sometimes it's really hard. You get caught in the trap of being a giver and you end up just giving too much. You never stay in activity mode, especially in our business. How many of you get caught in giver mode, seeing potential in someone, just wanting to focus on them, focus on them, light their fire, light their fire, light their fire in hopes that they take off while the whole time what would light their fire is your activity, not your attention. I think that it's really important that we own the energy again, like I said, that we bring people into this business with. I think that when exposing people to this business, it's, it's very important that we set a very, very realistic standard. Realistic. Because someone that, that spots the value in you will, someone that spots the value in that will receive, sees the value in you will respect the reality of the situation. If it's a pipe dream, if it's too good to be true, if it's, a, oh my gosh, you need to make $5,000, I can help you do that in the next 30 days. I'll be there for you for whatever you need. I got your back whenever you need it. If you can't follow through with that, then you're setting a standard that is going to give them the excuse to not only go out of activity mode the second you're not there, but like I said, to blame you. So what is the solve? To take back that control. You take that control back by how you're presenting this business. Back to my notes. And this goes back to really, I mean, and I love this because he gets down to the two things to identify a taker. And this is, again, we are spending this whole call focusing on how your prospects are looking at you. How your prospects are looking at you. Understand that being a part of a network marketing business, they are checking you off as a taker off the bat. You have to work your way out of being a taker. You work your way out of being a taker by building authentic and altruistic relationships. You also do that by authentically living a real life because like he says, with the access to, to reputable information, there are two ways that you can identify a taker. Accessing their reputable information, i.e. social media. I mean, it's, it's true with just about every employee out there or employer out there right now. They don't need references anymore. They just need your social media. That's what so many people are saying right now. We'll go, we'll go scroll your Facebook, your Instagram, your Twitter. That'll give us a good insight into who you really are. And the second was look for signs of boasting. Look for signs of lecking like they were talking about and, uh, and boasting. I love that here at the Happy Co. we have a lot of we conversation, not a lot of I conversation. But these are all signs to be aware of. If all of your prospects were to go and look at your social media right now as a direct re reflection of who you are, would you be happy with what they saw? And this isn't like a, like a slight or an attack on anyone. This is just a question. These are just questions. I'm asking them to you because maybe you haven't thought about them before. And this is the way that the whole world, i.e. your network, is seeing this. And so it's important. It's important that we take time. Like Gabrielle just said, it's important that we take an inventory, social media, and audit every once in a while to take a look at what our brand is saying about us. Understand that your prospects, someone you go meet, I mean, we do it with, uh, I mean, how many times have you guys gone on a date? I know that when Jennifer and I first started dating, I, I stalked her social media six years back. Tell me that you haven't done the exact same thing with a new prospect, a new business partner. When you get a new brand partner, you go stalk their social media like crazy. You do the same thing. It happens. And you immediately go, oh, we've got connections. Oh, we've got this in common. Oh, we've got that in common. Or you go, ooh, red flag. Ooh, 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 okay. Oh, that's a lot of that's a lot of drama. Oh, okay. Ooh. Um, but it gives you a pretty quick insight. Pretty quick insight scrolling. So that was a really great thing. Is is um, they talk about uh, Adam Ripken being the most connected person, 
and how he got that way by just being a giver, by just being a giver and giver and giver. And what he said is, again, when you are forced with the trade-off between giving and, product and productivity, you give more. You want people to join you because they know your heart is in the right place. So how can you give more than you receive? Think about it. Write this out. How can I give a new brand partner more than I receive? I want you to really think about that. Because let's just say a brand partner comes in on a happiest pack, and this isn't like financial, like monetary. But think about it. You're getting a few hundred dollars in Fast Start. You're getting some money off commission and the potential to earn quite a bit if they decide to take their business and decide to run with it. How can you give them more than you're getting from them? Again, I'm not talking monetary. We are living in the age of experientialism. An age and status defined by experience, not by material. I want you to think about that. For a lot of people, it's, it's a matter of literally just with your customers, reaching out to them, sending them a card, sending them a gift. Think about if you did something, and I'm just like spitballing this, like this is this is crazy. Don't like say Taylor told me to go do this or whatever. I'm just getting creative. But say I was building a business and I got $300 for a new brand partner. And I really wanted them to see the potential. And I'm not talking about creating something that's unduplicatable. But what if for a season I decided that I was going to invest $400 back into them? Invest, not give them, but invest $400 back into them. What kind of productivity do you see that you would see out of that person? Instead of asking them to come in and give where you are now getting from them, and then asking them to go and continue to give and continue to work in an effort for you to potentially get. I'm just thinking how I would potentially do stuff. Because it's a lot better to give before you receive. This was something I played with. Again, just to create, you know, what if? It was just a foster, a fostering an environment of everyone that joined my organization would get more from me than I would ever get from them. Think about it. It's an interesting thought. It flips the paradigm shift of kind of the, the unnatural mentality of getting from people. And again, I don't want you to, I don't want you to, again, think of this like a monetary, like a financial, like a, we're, we're, we're paying again, because I'm not saying, you know, give them $400, but invest in. What if you had a new brand partner come in and you said, look, that $300 that I got for you coming in, if you want and you want to commit, I will use that money to not only, um, I'll use that money to cover your hotel room for a convention. If you want to come to convention, you get the hotel room or you get the flight and I'll cover your hotel with that money. You got a free ticket with your pack. I'll invest into your business. It's a thought. You're giving up a short-term gain for potentially a long-term win. Thoughts, Just throwing stuff into the wind. They talked a lot about matchers. When matchers give with expectation of getting, they direct their giving towards people who they think can help them. 
A lot of people find themselves, raise your hand, put a, put a five in the comments if you found yourselves in the matcher category. When you've been reading this book, if you found yourself falling into the matcher category, put a five in the comments. When matchers give with expectation of getting, they direct their giving towards people who they think can help them. So a lot of this goes towards, you know, um, getting very selective, almost too selective as a matcher sometimes when it comes to those that you engage with about the business. You almost vet them too much because there's a part of your brain that thinks that if they're not going to do this, if they're not going to run and, and you think that they might not, then it's not worth your time and energy. Thought that was a really good um, concept to, to, to bring to light of how can you flip that? How can you, how can you step out of expectation and into a state of giving? How can a matcher step from uh, step out from matching and into giving and leave behind this, this mental block of, of kind of pre-selecting? everyone that you're talking to it's like everyone you meet you're like mm, i don't think they're 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 not going to be qualified they're not worth the time yes yeah, yeah try to see them all equally and again it's 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 people everyone the great thing about this book is you're going to find yourself everyone on here is going to find themselves in a different place in a different space and there's value for each and every part of where you could possibly be they talked about strong ties and weak ties. Put a one in the comments if you loved this part of chapter two. This is probably some of my biggest takeaways was the, 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 the strong ties and the weak ties. Because they said some of the strongest knots come from the, 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 the weakest ties. And I love that because they did a lot of studies in this book. And one of the studies, um, Strong ties being your family, your immediate friends, your really close people. Weak ties being those associates. Weak ties being those, um, you know, the 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 friend, you know, the the, the kind of uh, outer circle friends, your neighbors, stuff like that. What they found is that weak ties are predominantly way more likely to be there for you in times of need or in times of you asking then your strong ties win, which I thought was fascinating. I thought it was crazy. And so, um, but then again, like they said, it's tough to ask weak ties for help. And this is where they said, you know, it's tough to ask weak ties for help, the trust, but if you can find the trust of strong ties coupled with the info and the, the, the benefit of the weak ties, that's called reconnecting. I thought, what a great connection. What a great parallel. The trust of strong ties coupled with the info and activity of weak ties is reconnecting. Reactivating dormant contacts. Reconnecting with people. And again, when reconnecting with people, people that you haven't talked to for a long time, it's very easy to start that conversation of friendship because you already have those old ties. You already have those old emotions. You already have those old bonds. But, very big but and a caveat, like Adam Grant talks about in this book, if, if, if it was your taker mentality that led to those ties being weakened, then sometimes you have to almost accept that that bond might not be able to come back. Sometimes apologies can mend them, sometimes they can. But it's really important to identify, and this is not to meant to, not to, meant to be like a, a therapist lesson, but it's really meant to get inside your head and say, how have I been with the people in my life? If, I have, if Taylor could look at the last five years of my life and everyone I've come in contact with, and you chalked up all my interactions over the last five years, would I be labeled a taker? Would I be labeled a matcher? Or would I be labeled a giver? And so it's not about, this isn't about beating yourself up. It's about identifying 
in moving forward. A lot of times we get stuck in a rut. We don't even understand why we're there. A lot of times we get stuck in this place of why is nothing working? You know, like he talks about karma, all this stuff. Um, he says it in the book, givers get lucky. Givers get lucky. I got this book about five years ago. And while I would like to think that for most of my life, I've always thought I was a giver and, and, and this book helped me identify that there were seasons in my life where I was a giant taker. It helped me identify some of the triggers that got me into those. But then I realized that when I checked into this giver state, it says givers get lucky, but it's almost more than that. I mean, how many times, you know, put a five in the comments. I'll give you a couple examples. I can't tell you the amount of times that I have been upgraded to first class on an airplane flight just because of being a giver and being kind. I can't tell you the amount of free meals or nice things or rental car upgrades or, I mean, it's been as simple as me letting someone go in front of me in line. It's been as simple as me saying, no, it's all good. I'm in no rush hey, or offering a simple word of kindness, giving kindness without looking to receive anything in return. I've gotten lucky, I guess, over and over. But I think that that was one of the biggest takeaways for me is the trust of strong ties coupled with the info and the, the, uh, the uh, activity of weak ties. How many people can you reconnect with? How many people on your list can you reach back out to? Can you be talking to in the next week? Reconnecting. How have you been? It's been so long since we've talked last. I missed you. What's new? I got something crazy going on. It's awesome. I've been working from home, found an amazing company I'm, I'm attached to now, building a little side income while I'm still doing, me and the hubby are still doing our stuff, whatever it might be. Kids running around like crazy. Would love to share it with you sometime if you're interested. Simple little stuff reconnecting and then it said if you run out of weak ties you turn to your dormant ties reactivating a dormant tie takes much less work than creating a new tie Re reactivating a dormant tie yeah the whole season on dormant ties was great right And so I want to remind you guys in this chapter, as we kind of come to a close, I want you to really think tonight and tomorrow, throughout this whole week, I want you to think through the eyes of your prospect. I want you to think through the eyes of your network. I don't want you to look at your network the way that you've looked at them. I want you to look at them through their eyes, how they're looking at you. I want each and every one of you to have a rich network. I want you to be able to identify if maybe there have been seasons where you have been falling into a season where you've been, you know, taking on the role of a taker and giver's clothing. And not beat yourself up about it. Just own it. Like I said, there were seasons in my life that I had to own where I was a massive taker. I didn't beat myself up. I just decided to make a change. Just decided that going forward, I don't need to live that way anymore. And guess what? All of the relationships that I thought had been tarnished all came back, every single one. And I think that there's a lot of times, again, uh, I hear this every day in conversation, if you find yourself getting ghosted, if you find yourself getting ghosted, the infamous ghosted in network marketing, put a five in the comments if you've ever been ghosted. Everyone on this call should put a five in the comments. I put a five in the comments. If you put a five in the comments, that means that that person has looked at you for better or for worse as a taker.
And owning that is the first step in taking on the, 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 the role of true leadership. Owning that is the first step of saying, yes, I didn't build a relationship strong enough to ask that question. It was a little bit over the top. I did it. That was inappropriate of me. And I hope that each and every one of you that might have felt alone that has been ghosted on this call saw through example that every single one of us goes through the same thing. Brian Heflin, put a five in the comments. Melissa Lucas, put a five in the comments. Gabrielle Merrill, put a five in the comments. Melissa Porto, they all put fives in the comments because no one is alone when it comes to that. We have all fallen into that little, and it's not, it's not like you are a forever taker because you have made a mistake. It's not like you are forever damaged because you have gotten excited about your opportunity. It is not, you are not tainted. You are not flawed because you are passionate. But this is a wake up call. This is an opportunity to plan, do, review, to accept and to identify that there have been things that you have been doing that have not been getting you the desired result. In order for you to get what you desire, you are going to need to change. You're going to need to adapt. You're going to need to try new things. And all I'm asking you to try is to give a little bit more, to love a little bit more. To think of all the ways outside of the happy co that you can bring value to your networks, to their lives. Because while we all see the value here, we all see the blessing and the, the amazing, incredible opportunity that we have. The people in your life are going to have to see that you care dramatically before they look at you is more than just a matcher or a taker. When they start to look at you as a giver, you will have people that will be joining your business in waves that you will not be able to control. That's what I want for each and every one of you. And yes, this might take a season for some of you. This might take a season of going back and saying, you know what, I have, I, you know, I'm a single mom. I've got three kids. I've got, I, I have to be a taker. I have to ask a lot of my network in this season. I have to. I don't have the, I'm, everyone I call, I'm asking for help. I'm asking if they can help watch the kids. I'm asking if they can come over and let the dog. I'm asking if they can, you know, pick up a shift or whatever it might be. Understand that that doesn't mean that you can't add and be a giver, give more on top of that. It doesn't mean that you can't find ways to reciprocate and to overdo what they might be giving to you. It's just a matter of getting creative and getting out of the mindset of what can you give me and getting into the mindset of what can I give you? I hope that this call brought some benefit to your life. I hope that it gave you a little bit of perspective. I hope that it helped you open your eyes a little bit to the way potentially your prospects are looking at you and how we could potentially work to make it, them look at us a little bit differently in a little bit brighter light. In recapping, how can you give more than you receive as we know it is better to give before we receive? Remember that an ulterior motive can be felt and smelt a mile away. So lose it as quick as you can. And the more altruistic your attitude, the more benefits you will gain from the relationships in your network. There's not a, a it's not a, 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 there's a reason why they, they've said it forever, the secret to living is giving. The secret to living a good life is giving. 
work on those strong ties, work on those weak ties. And when it comes to the trade-off between giving or productivity, give more because you can. Stay productive, keep giving, plug in. Let's all become the best versions of ourselves. I believe in you. I've got your back. Every one of us does here at corporate. I can't wait to cheer you on. I'm so excited for a convention to see so many of you walk across that stage. And I know that there are so many of you that are running for ranks right now that I hope you hit before we get there. I appreciate you. God bless you. Do not miss out on this What's Up Weekly is not only are we going to be doing the Paradise Punch launch, pre-launch, but we are also going to have our third keynote speaker that we are going to be announcing. And he's going to be with us on What's Up Weekly to deliver some amazing information that you do not want to miss. Until then, stay safe, be well. God bless you guys.